there is not much difference between the believer and the unbeliever. In many ways the Christian church is a social club like many other clubs. It has a narrowly defined focus and like other social clubs performs its duties in packets. The church works within a circumscribed time frame and a particular space to accomplish well-defined goals. Apart from its product which is not sold but delivered freely, it is akin to a business. Obviously, the church must pay its bills, but it does this through donations that hopefully cover its expenses. Other than that, it attempts to provide social goods without cost to its clients. This gives the church the image of a charity, but while what is does is done as a charity, the church itself is not a charitable organization. It is, as said, more akin to a club that engages in charitable missions. There are many churches, the number is not known but they total many thousands. But this is because the conventional church is akin to a social club and clubs are generally attached to a building. It is from this physical location that the club or church usually provides its outreach activities. However, the church is not a club. Its existence is not justified by its works. The church is not customizable to its clients. The church is not to be modified to meet the preference of its clientele. But liberal churches have throughout their history operated much as social clubs do. They focus on providing services to their clients when what they ought to do is be the body of Christ. It is not okay for there to be any number of churches but one, this being the body of Christ. Ecumenics is not something to strive for it is what defines us. Unfortunately, the church has preempted the possibility of coming together because they have defined themselves by the things that keeps them apart. The church is often declared to be not buildings and not memberships, but we are far more certain about what we are not than what we are. The church is not doctrines and statements of faith. We cannot come together by reconciling paper statements. Universalizing the Westminster Confession is not going to erase the issues that divide us. However, the divisions are more manufactured than real and more to do with image than substance. The foundations of faith remain strong at the base. The fractures are cosmetic and have more to do with administration or ecclesiastics than scripture. What is the one thing we can all agree on regardless of denomination? There are the elements of the Westminster Confession but the key facet that divides Christians from all other organizations is our faith in the doctrine of saved by faith alone. Other groups will claim a faith in Christ or that God exists, they may believe in the Trinity, but all subscribe to some form of works. Christians believe in faith, itself. We believe in the saving grace of faith, without always understanding completely what this means. If we are being pulled apart it is on some other matter than the matter of faith. But that is the problem, we have too many issues pulling us apart and this suggests our faith that defines us as weak. The Bible tells us, if we had the faith of a mustard seed we could move mountains, in this context the mountain means governments. We could move these secular forces out of our way. We know that but there is a greater power in faith we ought to know about. But few seem to know, but it is a power that needs to be claimed before we have the power to move governments. It is our faith that binds on earth. What does this mean? It means the church binds believers to itself and in so doing fits us for salvation. We do not find it outside of the church. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven, but we need to have something to bind people to. There has to be a faith based church. The problem is Christians have focused on their personal relationship with Christ and not bothered with coming together. If we do come together, it is in the most superficial way possible. We come together by coming in the vicinity of other believers, we do not spiritually come together in a way that will bind others to us and us to them. We know what this means in terms of a marriage. But the church is married to Christ, and we are married to Him as a body, not as individuals. There is a reason for the centrality of the church, it is not just metaphysical academics or theory. 
Our faith as individuals is directed at God, but it is the church that Jesus died for not the individual. We cannot come to Christ and live in faith as an exercise in absolute certainty. This is tantamount to being saved by works. The power of our faith that we are saved, the certainty of our conviction, is not an achievement that above a certain threshold, ensures our salvation. Christians worry about the occasional doubt or failure to put all things in the hands of God, as if this has dropped their level of faith below a prescribed threshold. We tend to think how we live is a sign of how deep our faith is as if faith that is not of a sufficient strength cannot tip the scale in our favor. But faith is not a type of energy that forces open the door into heaven. But so long as we adhere to the unbiblical doctrine that it is believe in Jesus that saves us, we will maintain our exposure to the very things that destroy this faith. When Scripture tells us Ephesians 2 verses 8-9, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, it is telling us that the faith that saves is not of ourselves but the gift of God, it is talking about the church. It is the through the faith exercised through the church that God works. This is why Matthew 18 verse 18 tells us that whosoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven, but we can also lose them. Scripture gives us the method by which a person is ejected from the fellowship of the church. The person does not lose faith, he or she loses his or her connection to the church. Christians treat faith as if it is something magical, as if this spiritual elixir imbues us with the special power of self-cleansing. Faith is considered something spiritual, perhaps a special kind of spiritual force that has to be nurtured and cared for. So long as we possess it, we are saved. This is the salvation promised in the Lord of the Rings. He who possessed the ring had special powers but was in turn, possessed by the power of the ring. But the Christian faith is more prosaic than that. Our faith saves us because it initiates a technical change. There is a large difference between having a faith that makes you part of the church and having a faith in yourself that leaves you in the world. Let's look at the problem this way. We can have faith in each other than permits us to trust one another and therefore, not need the interposition of regulatory bodies, or we can fear one another. In the latter instance we need governments and laws and systems of enforcement to keep us safe or at least to give us the illusion of safety. The law does not truly keep us safe, but it does give us a layer of protection. This layer of protection tends to insert a legal entity between us and others whom we deal with. We have lawyers and bankers and insurance companies and others who broker our relationships between us and others. But the security comes at a cost of isolation. We are relatively isolated from one another as a cost of being protected from one another. This is the problem with thinking we can be insular in the way we live and just have faith in Christ. That is not how it works. If we reject the church as the vehicle by which we bind and are bound we miss the point of the church. We do not decide we are saved to which God concurs and God does not just select us at random. The only other possibility is that we are saved by faith and that faith is manifested in and through others like us who also live by faith. For a thousand or four churches matter because by being churches in the plural, they contradict the very thing the church is supposed to be which is universal. Multiple churches cannot bind on earth because each one is contradicting and countermanding the choices of the others. Catholics claim Protestants are not saved and Protestants claim Catholics are not saved, and many thousands of other churches chime in with their opinion as to who is saved and who is not. All of these decisions are based on doctrinal obedience, not faith. The problem Christians have is that a multiplicity of churches is the surest sign there is faith is lacking, we do not trust one another. The key to trust is unity and this is the key feature of the ecumenical movement. There must be an end of the divisions in the church. But the only way to end the divisions in the church is to create them with the world. There is a line we ought never to cross. We cannot impose our costs onto others. 
this is the universal constant. What we do ought never to impose costs onto others, but there is a problem with this if we believe in God, because it is God that created everything physical not us. The church divides because the church robs God of what belongs to Him. In staking out their doctrinal-based territory they are not dividing themselves just from other churches, they divide themselves from God. We do not own territory or other forms of property, including buildings and pews. We own only what we produce in faith for the people of God to build the church as the fruit of our faith. We own the souls we bring to Christ, as the church.